Um, so thanks, guys, for uh, being willing to join the discussion today. Um, it's kind of the second one. We did the first one last week on speedrunning, these kind of state of the game and monster train discussions. And I think that went really well. Um, at least it uh, got very positive feedback on uh, YouTube when we posted it and live when we did it. Um, so hoping that uh, this continues to go well. Uh, but yeah, so the topic today wanted to cover is the daily challenges. Um, all of you guys uh, are well experienced with daily challenges. Um, definitely seeing a lot of, ah, I mean, everyone fluctuating between uh, top 10 uh, and then my occasional top 250, you know, those runs happen. But uh, yeah, so great to have you guys. Um, maybe uh, just do a quick promotion of uh, what background is regarding daily challenges and then how you stream and so on. One can start. Bane, maybe you start. Just give a quick self-promotion. Oh, yeah, self-promotion. Why, why are you suited for this discussion? <laughs> uh, cool. I've been playing Monster Train since beta, uh, and I really enjoyed the game. I didn't really get into daily challenges until probably about 10 days after release, I'd say. Um, but immediately I was hooked. It got me, uh, I very quickly became uh, getting up in the ranks to uh, seeing myself in the top 10, top 50s pretty regularly. And I actually keep a spreadsheet of my performance sort of measured over time. And I'm currently ranked 38th. So not too terrible, but we'll get there. <laughs> Do you want to give a little intro for yourself? Sure. Um, so I too got into Monster Train during the beta. And um, similar to Bane, it, was, uh, it took me a while to get into the daily challenges, but I really enjoyed them because of the diversity and the additional challenge of scoring. Um, I managed to get into the closed beta testing team, so uh, there was a small group in the closed beta testers who were always competing in the daily challenge, and I was uh, definitely one of them who was very interested in doing well in the dailies and optimizing stuff and adapting to uh, different strategies that are possible with uh, mutators. and I very much enjoy this playstyle of optimizing for score and adapting to the daily mutators. So uh, I am you, I'm often on the first page, on the top 10 of the daily challenges. Uh, sometimes my strategy don't work out so well and I had daily challenges where I died before I could even reach Seraph. So that happens to me too. Yeah. And then uh, Chance, what about you? I'm Chance. So, um, as far as the daily challenges are concerned, I think it's an excellent way to break the monotony of what can be tedious from, like, the normal grind on it. Especially with all um, what they add into the game. Although, I, I do have a tendency to try to rush through things, and when I pause and think about things, um, it, it, it definitely changes my perspective. And I think the daily challenge can be a great way for people to really learn and strategize as far as this game is concerned. So, uh, kind of similar to others, uh, I started playing in open beta. And I, honestly, at the time, I didn't do any daily challenges, right? I was just doing Covenant 0, Covenant 1, repeat play over and over again. And then uh, when the full release came out, um, early on, I was doing daily challenges. And I, I think for me, uh, Chance, you mentioned it already, but um, I don't think that Monster Train uh, is gets stale very quickly because there's a lot of variety just doing the regular grind from 1 to 25. But um, having these daily challenges is kind of like these special puzzle boxes that you're trying to break down and see um, 
you have a whole thousands of people trying to do the exact same seed and how are you going to approach it and try to yeah better or or something different than the others to try to push you into the top 10 top 25 top 50. It's very appealing to me um looking at the about the number of people that participate it's ranges between three to five thousand is what i've seen as a pretty standard trend five thousand people participating i think um and I, I don't think the devs have released numbers but the estimates on steam are something like um at least hundred thousand people probably have bought monster train so looking at a subset of players that's like half percent if we were trying to con to convince the other 97.5% of players who don't do the daily challenges, uh, what would you tell them to try to encourage them to participate? I mean, it's open for anyone to start. I, I'll I'll gladly field this. I, I think it 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 is especially coming from somebody that like wants to speed run the game like wants to make it different i i constantly see myself running into a situation where i i i i basically become an imbecile right so like i i don't play it the right way and you only have one go round at it right so you have to think things through and if you walk into that circumstance as a newcomer Right, you'll easily surpass my score if if that's my mindset coming in. Where like I'm like, all right, so I'm just gonna try to kill the boss on the first floor every single time, and I, I'm gonna do that. Y you don't have that mentality, right? So like, y you'll have your own strategy. Like you can develop everything on your own and like make your own strategy up and decide what's best for you, and then. I think it's very easy for each person to come into this game and decide, like, oh, I'm going to do things this way and decide that, like, that didn't work the best for me. And I could, like, idealistically, like, this happens, but I know that I can modify my own strategy this way. I, I think it's easy for a beginner to come into a daily challenge and modify their strategy as opposed to other ways to play. Hmm. Okay. So All right, go ahead, so. Okay. Uh so I think uh the daily challenge uh is a very good way to increase your experience in the game, learn more about it because it is the same seat for everyone. Uh you can discuss your picks, your plays with other people you can watch uh, streamers play the daily challenge streamers like us who regularly stream uh, daily challenges and uh, you can uh, because it's the same seed you can potentially uh, much there's uh, a much easier access to find your mistakes or where you couldn't improve, or uh, how your strategy was maybe uh, more effective or less effective than another strategy. You can also look at decks from uh, top players in the game itself, in the rankings. So that's something that can uh, definitely help you get better as well. Um, so that's definitely one aspect that I think many people many players can benefit from the daily challenge and then there's also the thing that these mutators they change some of the fundamental rules of the game so it's a a lot of diversity a lot of variety as well which uh, can be a lot of fun yeah i kind of agree with a lot of what's been said so far but i think there's something else that's probably attracting when it comes to uh playing daily challenges so first of all you have the fact that look some daily challenges we have three to five thousand players it seems to depend and what's it really interesting about daily challenges is that despite the fact that monster train boils down to on its surface world a bunch of small single basic choices 
those choices add up to having, you know, of those 3,000 people, if we remove the people who unfortunately lose very early on, we have so much diversity amongst those people that each one of those, like let's say the top 50%, each one of those 1,500 people, depending on the daily challenge, sometimes they tend to be fairly similar, but they have each got a different play style. They've made different choices. And that I think is just something that's really incredible. I think that being able to engage with a community like that and see yourself progress and improve day after day is really good. It teaches self-reflection. So, you know, when you're not able to get a really good uh, score one day, even though you had maybe a couple of days of amazing score, you can be like internally thinking, why didn't that happen? And you don't do that when you're playing single player and necessarily, I mean, so, some will, but it, you know, it, it's once you get to a certain point in single player, whereas from daily challenge, that's there in the get go. The, the mutators, as Soundlink said, are absolutely incredible. And one last thing, the, the playing with the groups uh, that Chance alluded to was, uh, that wasn't even a pun, that was good. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh is is something that's really solid but uh i i, I didn't even go further you know uh, when uh i started seeing sal link on the leaderboards before i even knew who he was i didn't know he was a streamer i had no knowledge about him and i was like you know this guy this guy who i keep seeing on the the leaderboard this is this is who i've got to beat this is who i want to see myself beat every day and and that that is now like a personal sort of like nemesis <laughs> situation and it's amazing like just just creating these little uh people who you see regularly and be like i want to get better than that so yeah i i think that's awesome that you you have that kind of relationship with him but like i think everything you just said there bane was like spot on i th i i think he pretty much encapsulated everything the daily challenge is yeah i definitely agree i do have people like that too for me it's mostly uh thanatos who was, who was also in the daily challenge yeah. uh, very active in the daily challenge in the closed beta so it was very often there was a uh, there was a kind of a rivalry a friendly rivalry between me and thanatos and one other uh open a uh, closed beta tester i don't see as regularly but he was he was a bit more active uh leary 93 uh, he was also pretty high up there so we always had that friendly competition amongst ourselves to score the highest in the daily challenges and it's it's really fun and maybe one last point that i would make um play differently in the daily challenge in general is it's a different goal in the end right like most of the covenant grind hell rush maybe hell rush to a smaller extent but it's it's like survival Covenant 25 runs are all about how do i survive this run the best that i can and you can't play that way with daily challenge if you want to get in the top 10 top 25 you have to play a little bit greedier it's balancing greed with know the the your own game knowledge of knowing okay if i if i go all in on this uh, consumer of crowns and i don't get an enabler in the next you know couple of rings i'm screwed and i think uh having that uh risk reward mentality um to a larger extent than at least i get out of the standard covenant runs it's also i think quite good it, it pushes it forces you to push yourself and and for me um this has led to a lot of discovery as well on uh, to exploit mechanics, how to take advantage of cards in a way that I don't normally consider. Um, and then I, with the point that you made already, Bane, that I do this, um, I always look at the top five if I'm not in it. Even if I am in it, I look at the top five and see like, how did these guys do it? Sometimes it's because they got all the artifacts because they hacked. And sometimes it's because they did something completely different than me. Um, I do want to. Uh, I will. Sorry, I just wanted to jump in there. I, I do want to say that, that even though there are like sometimes hackers in the top five, it's it is worth Very. stating that uh, Shiny Shoe do amazing work at removing hackers from that leaderboard yep. and making it so they yep. that they do a hundred. I I can vouch for that. Even in Hell Rush, which is something I'm far more like familiar with than the daily, but I do want to like shout back to 
Nate right there in something he said where it's like, do I want to take the risk? Like in Hell Rush, we're taking the risk every time, right? Like you have to take that challenge or, or you're screwed, right? It doesn't work. It it does not work that way in the daily challenge. Like sometimes we recognize in the daily challenge, like we don't want our pyre to take that much damage because we will lose more points because we can't represent our top tier of our train, right? Like we can't do it. So like it's it's different where we need to in Hell Rush. It doesn't work that way in the daily challenge, and I just think yeah. that. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I, I want to, I, I'm interested. Opinions. I'm interested. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just want to say I don't think I've ever skipped a challenge in uh, skipped a trial in the daily challenge since the game's release. Not I a single one. 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 <laughs> one once. I mean, I I, I I agree that you shouldn't for for top tier score, but I guess it depends on. I, I mean, maybe I'm messing up. Maybe you guys like can show me things and like show me the light. But like, I I just feel like there's certain circumstances where like if I choose wrong initially, I'm screwed. If, if but again, you know, even if it's like a for like, what is it called, guys? Help me out. Where like, um, there's e every floor has a minion on it. What's it called? Oh yeah. Um, remember the the trial name? Mark of Invasion. Yes, Mark, Mark of Invasion. Invasion. There. So so like you're guaranteed to take pyre damage, right? And and so we have to weigh that out. Yeah, I, I understand, right? Which is not a big deal, but like, what was it? Yesterday's invasion had spikes, right? So so if your pyre hit, if Pillars. you're what do you mean, pillars? No, it's your pyre, right? No? Spoilers. Spoilers. I said I haven't played the daily challenge yet. Oh, I apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's yeah. just like if, if hypothetically were it to be spikes, like if your pyre hits a mark of invasion, it's gonna get wrecked, right? So yeah, but, oh, but But if you look at it from just a skull perspective, if your pyre takes 100 damage during a fight. If you took, if you took the, tr if you take the trial, your pyre takes 100 damage as a result of that. You still have the same score as if you didn't take the trial and took no damage at all, because no, the, the no, challenge no, is no, uh, no, 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 no. The challenge is the challenge is at 50 percent. Right. You, you can't take lose damage so, as ludicrous. Like you, that. That is insane amount I mean, of damage. Yeah, it would. It would probably ruin your uh, further decision making but if we are a bit uh, more realistic about things um, if you take a trial and you take like 15 damage from it yes you lose 30% points but you gain 50% so that's still a net gain of 20% of the points of the fight that's like uh, killing the boss two floors further right, down. I yeah, I get you, but like, if if you take a hundred damage, you are not gonna get just minus thirty. You're gonna get minus way more than that. No, but no, it's not a cap. It's not at fifty percent. No matter how much damage you take, you can't ever lose it... more points than you gain from the trial. It's impossible. All right. Well, shame on me. <laughs> but for all that being said, I do take the trial every time, regardless of how that contradicts me. I do only because I'm more of a Hell Rush player than a trial player. I, I this is right, and like when I'm when I don't stream the daily challenge all the time. I found very early that uh, when I stream the daily challenge, I play significantly worse. So I've uh, my own pride. I usually do the daily challenge at a different time. And there's actually multiple reasons for that. And I'll get into it in a little bit because uh, a little bit mental mentality here. But um, yeah, so when I do stream it, uh, what I always say is you don't wuss out on trials and daily challenge. You can't. If you ever want to get in the top 25, you take every trial. And if you look at the scores after you go through all of them, every single one of them, at least in the top 25, took every trial without exception. And uh, so then you get to those, you know, floor sevens, and you get all enemies heal on every time they move up a floor, and you have to ask yourself, are you going to do this? And you are, because you're doing a daily challenge, and it's the only way to get a top score. 
Yeah, the question for me. It's... Go ahead, selling. The question now becomes not do I do this? It's how do I do this? Can and this is something that I think um, daily challenges at least built in me is uh, knowing that I'm taking every single challenge. Have to build your deck around that. Yep. I'm building my deck and I'm hitting floor four, floor five, and I don't have a way to deal at least 140, 160 damage on a single floor. I know I'm going to get screwed by that floor seven challenge. And you have to prep, build up to that, and make sure that you're deck building for those later challenges that are going to come. Yeah, yeah, and for I, sure. I wasn't doing that before I started doing the daily challenges regularly. So I guess that comes back into, though, like, is there ever a point where, like, we yield that we can't get that first floor boss kill and and, and we stack on the third floor? Sometimes you do. Sure. Yep, that definitely happens. Um, because if you have to weigh, uh, besides doing the trial for scoring, you have to weigh taking pile damage and killing the boss uh, earlier against each other. And... If you take five pile damage, that's worth one floor of one turn earlier boss kill. Because five pile damage is 10%, one turn earlier kill is 10%. So you weigh these two against each other and sometimes you have to say, no, I have to kill on a higher floor. Otherwise I will lose points to taking pile damage because I don't have the time to set up to prepare for these enemies. Exactly, exactly. Uh, although I, I don't feel like that's an option where it comes to other game modes. I, I think that's what makes the daily challenge so special, right? Like, we have to do things a certain way. We have yep. to, like, strategize to make things exactly perfect or we're not getting in the top 10. Yeah. I think that it also... Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I think babe. that it also prioritizes things like uh, that you might not prioritize in uh, a non daily challenge. So there are cards that exist in the game that I typically won't touch in a, in a high covenant run, or sometimes not even touch in a hell rush run necessarily. Um, I don't want but, to interrupt, but can, can you give me an example, Vane? Okay, sure. So um, I don't really like uh, days as a uh, mechanic, generally speaking. Um, and unless I'm going really hardcore into sapping, I don't like picking just a single sap card. However, in daily challenge, if I know that I'm going to be maybe facing an area where they're going to hit my pyre in a later challenge, I might grab a simple sap card early on, just so that way, when those enemies are going to get to that point, I drop it on them so that way they don't do damage or as much damage to my pyre. Whereas I wouldn't care about that necessarily in the other runs because I wouldn't be in Hell Rush. I don't always take all trials, and in Covenant runs, I definitely don't take all trials. So it's I don't I can actually pick and choose in those runs, whereas I don't have that luxury in Daily Challenge. So I have additional cards that I wouldn't normally consider as standalones. Yep. Can I interrupt one more time? And I'm sorry, Nate. I'll let you, let you in after this, and I'm sure we're gonna have a Hell Rush discussion beta you saying you've had success in hell rush without taking all challenges yeah absolutely multiple times okay. uh, I, I i have several instances of successful hell rush runs where i haven't taken all challenges especially if it is a complex uh i know i know this is getting off topic but if it's a complex uh clan combination where it's like uh, Melting Remnant and Umbra, for instance, that takes so much time to micromanage that I don't need to take every challenge. Okay, and I apologize for getting up us off oh, talking. Thank you, Nate, all you. Um, I also thought uh, maybe this is a good transition point to talk about with daily challenges is uh, the current state, right? So the current state, as I mentioned, is basically everyone's taking every trial, um, and question I pose, and I don't want to uh, load it too much, so I'll keep it very um, at to start with, and then maybe we can load it up later. Um, what do you think about like the ratio of scores, the distribution of scores, and the distribution of success and failures? So successful runs versus failed runs, if you just look at like, we obviously don't know the stats, but just your anecdotal experience, how are you feeling about that level of difficulty currently, 
and uh, the amount of success that's happening in the daily challenge? Do you think that that's a good level, a good balance right now, or would you want to see it differently in the future? Just talking specifically balance and current level of success people are finding. All right, so I'll go first on this, sorry. Um, I'll just jump in and take it. Uh, my experience with the daily challenges is this, you know, not all daily challenges are completable with all choices, which we all know. Um, one of the things that I love about starting a daily challenge is I get to see the top 10 scores. And top 10 scores let me know how difficult is this daily challenge. If the top 10 scores halfway through the day are all in the 44,000 region, I know it's going to be a difficult challenge. That difficulty spikes. So if they're all 50,000 scores, I go, okay, this, this might be an easier challenge for people to complete. Um, I find that the overall difficulty between a 44,000 run and a 50,000 run in terms of top 10 scores um, to be fairly good. I enjoy that uh, different days have different challenge levels. Um, I wish that shiny shoe could do something of course they can't um but i wish that they could do something where you know on the weekends or, or like on sunday maybe it's like a really challenging run or something um i know that probably requires a little bit too much uh thought process on shiny shoes behalf i don't know if they're just randomly giving us daily challenges it doesn't feel that way it feels like uh it feels like the first battle almost is very rarely invasion and stuff like that there there it, it seems intentional um intentionally crafted in some ways so um i feel like the difficulty level is there in terms of completion i would say uh you know from what i've looked at when i score in the top like 200 or 300 at that point there's probably only about one person at, uh probably no, no no at that point there's still probably about 50 percent of people who are still finishing the challenge uh and then as we go down it starts being like one person a page which really means that only about, I'd say, 10% of people are actually successfully finishing the challenge. Um, maybe it's more than that, uh, but I feel like that's a fairly comfortable level of challenge, at least for me. So from a challenge aspect, I feel like that's pretty much in the sweet spot as it is now. Yeah, uh, I can agree with that. Um, I... Like, for me, the daily challenge is always the first thing I do on stream. And one of the first things I do when I look at the uh, daily challenge after taking a look at the clans and mutators is I will also look at the scoreboard. And the look at the scoreboard will oftentimes define my very uh, broad strategy. Do I go for consistency or do I go for risks? If the scores are... Uh, on the lower end, uh, 44,000 for example, I will definitely try to go for consistency, build a deck that uh, doesn't take damage and can take all trials, and uh, early boss kills, not so much of a concern in that circumstance. While if the deck, if the scores are in the 50k, maybe above 50k region, then I will definitely try to take risks and take high roll cards that uh, might not pay out, but if they pay out, they pay out big time and I might get flying boss kills and things like that. So that's a very interesting uh, difference in the range of difficulty. Uh, sometimes you can also look at the modifiers and think this is going to be a tough one or this is going to be an easy one. Uh, I like that there's uh, some range in difficulty um, and yeah, I think uh, I don't really look uh, at completion rates or anything, but I think about 10-15% of uh, players who finish the daily challenge does seem kind of a good uh, challenge and the daily challenge offers this unique uh, thing that if you are a very good player you optimize for score and if you're um, not quite so skilled player maybe less experienced with the game you can just play the daily challenge and just try to get through just try to beat Seraph and 
that's also an interesting challenge because of the mutators changing the basic rules of the game. So I think it's a, it strikes a very nice balance that's uh, interesting for both more experienced and less experienced players. One contrast to both of your comments, uh, I try to get the daily challenge in before any scores are posted. I have the luxury of uh, being in a time zone where that's very convenient for me. <laughs> but uh, I know, you know, other players, four in the morning is not the greatest time to jump into Monster Train and do a daily challenge, but um, it works out quite well for me. And I do it because, <laughs> because um, I don't want to have the preconception. I, I want to go in complete blind see uh where you know try to try to puzzle it out without having that because I, I i did at first i used to and i definitely will this morning because uh, the challenge has been out for um half the you know half a day a little over half a day in general it's also why i don't stream it because i don't normally stream at uh p.m in the afternoon me so uh yeah, i have been doing that recently because i I noticed that it was affecting my decision making and I wanted to kind of like hone that back and say, hey, um, I want to make my decisions based on what I'm given, not based on other performance. I'm thrilled that you can't see the details behind. I mean, that would just for me ruin it entirely. Um, and uh, but then even scores for me is a little bit of a spoiler for exactly the reasons that you illustrated. and. So uh, you're welcome for uh, me getting my runs in early so that you can reference it when you're going in to your own runs. <laughs> Nate, I'm going to uh, chime in right here, dude. Like, I'm going to take it. I, I, I think what you just said is outstanding. And I appreciate where you come from. Like, I, I, I play other games where there are daily challenges and I want to be the first front facing person doing it. I don't necessarily want to be doing it when it comes to Monster Train, right? And back to Bane's point, and actually about back to Sal Ling's point, like, they're the best at what they do, right? Like, they're here for a reason. So, I get it. But, I also love being the upfront person. Like, that is fun. And trying to derive your own like ability to like do something and make something special and it and, and be good for you it, it is important like maybe it's not like that great for any one of us but back to our original topic it's very important for people that are getting into this game it's very fun not to worry about that 40k 50k it is very important to like just worry about what you can do so Maybe that's another good segue to the next point. So, um, who has, and in which, and maybe maybe not say all the games, but if you've done other games that have similar daily challenges, um, what do you find good or equal around Monster Train? What do you like about other daily challenges you see in other games that you would hope that they would adapt? Or what's your feeling if you compare um, how uh, Shiny Shoe has handled the whole daily challenge structure? to what you've seen in other games. Maybe haven't seen in other games if this is the first time you're jumping into daily challenges. And it I'll feel this if it's okay. I I do think that we can expect Bane and Solink to like remain on top, right? And the reason why... The, <laughs> trust me, I'm not like just like blowing smoke up your butthole. <laughs> like, I, I, I like it's just experience. It, it's how it works, right? Because um, other games I've played with daily challenges, once you get to a certain level, like you're always going to re remain on top, and the only people that are going to beat you are going to be people that cheat or people that watch and like just know how to break it down. So. I, I I think for as early in development as this game is, it's done well. And honestly, I don't see how it could separate itself otherwise. But I yield now. All right. I think uh, I think the only other daily challenges that I played, I play a lot of games that you would play like on a daily basis and have like a match and leaderboard style situation. 
Um, but the only other daily challenges that I played, and I didn't play them for very long, were Slay the Spire. And of course, Monster Train gets referenced as Slay the Spire clone often, um, which I don't think is entirely fair. I think there are so many differences with the game that uh, it can't really be adequately compared. Um, I do feel that despite my experience and despite my score, regular score keeping here in Monster Train, I actually was fairly trash at the daily challenges in Slay the Spire. Um, and I think that that, uh, where was I going with this? Um, while there are definitely some changes that I would like to see, and I think we're going to get into changes a little bit later in the, um, state of play, the, the fact is, is that Shiny Shoe has done amazing at giving us a daily challenge that works consistently and well um, at the start. I wish that they could do something more with the leaderboards, though, just to, um, I feel like some some differences there for like things like restarting and stuff like that. Um, even, even if you wanted to keep narrowing it down, like allowing people to see their performance over a week or stuff like that would be really nice. Um, I'd also like to be able to see other people's stuff like that. And I think that level of adding further competition, um, can only improve the daily challenge experience. You know, when I see, when I see Soundlink up there for the third time in a week, you know, being able to click on Soundlink's name and be like, has Soundlink been, or if I haven't seen Soundlink for a few days and I'm like, where's Soundlink been? And then I can click on his profile and I can be like, cool. He had a couple of bad days back to back. I know that that never happens, but it's it's a it's a it's a good dream to have, right? Uh, um, so I think that uh, Monster Train. Sorry, give me a second. I feel like Monster Train um, does very well with its daily challenges. There's enough variance. There's enough uh, changes every day that I really enjoy it. I wish it was more frequent than daily if I could, but that's not up to me. Yeah, um, for me, somewhat similar uh, to Bane, the only other game I have done daily challenges in is Slay the Spire. Um, what I really like about Monster Train's daily system is that it's very easy to keep track of your objectives for score which was always something that put me off in Slay the Spire because scoring in Slay the Spire is very complex. There are a lot of things you have to keep in mind, like the, um, like the cards in your deck directly affect your score instead of just how your deck performs, which I wasn't a big fan of, but it's... Uh, does have some appeal as well, so I, I won't say it's a bad thing, it just wasn't for me. And uh, in Monster Train I really like that it's mostly about performance. Well, you, while you could say like uh, earlier boss kills doesn't really mean performance, it's still a pretty straightforward goal you can aim for and optimize around. So um, I like that. And uh, what Bane Williams said, if you can, uh, if you can see other players like uh, uh, how they performed, that's that would be very cool. I would like that. There's uh, something similar already with the friends leaderboard, but it's not quite as far-reaching as the thing Bane described here. Um, but yeah, if you wanna if if you wanna see me when you when I'm not in the first few pages then uh, add me on your stream friends list and uh, then you can look me up in the I mean I'm already gonna do that. You, 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 you don't have to tell me that. You gotta get me one over. And, uh, one maybe last comment I would make, um, specific to the mutators, uh, uh, Slide the Spire, but also there's uh, what other games I was doing dailies on. I know it's been others before, but um, I they fundamentally changed the game in a different way than I've seen, at least in Slay the Spire. 
Um, Slay the Spire was often wholly focused on deck building effects. It affects your deck building. You start with different cards, get a prismatic orb or whatever, prismatic shard. You get, so it's, it's like how it affects your deck building. And there are modifiers for deck building in Monster Train, right? You get the take one, get two, uh, you get the purge at the end of every turn. So there are deck building effects. On the tactical level, I've not seen modifiers as heavily impacting the tactical game Monster Train. Like it's it's crazy, right? You get you get uh, yeah. Acid Rain, and or yeah, and a hundred percent the King Car. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. And knowing that there are layers to the mutators, for me, I, I really enjoy this. And and maybe to even contrast, I'm, maybe this is too broad. In general, one of the things that I love at Monster Train is the tactical layer is so different than any other tactical layer I've ever played. Yep. You don't have as strong of a, if I do this card now, it affects what happens 10 turns later in a way I've never seen in another game. If I play my champion on floor two, it can make a vast different effect on the overall run than uh, if I play him on floor one. And whether I strike first or defend first just doesn't matter in a lot of the other games. I, I really like this yeah. stack this part of it. They, I, I do want to say one thing. I, I do want to say one thing, man. It, it, there's not a segue for this, but I need you to know, man, what you've put together is very impressive, and the way you host this is super impressive. Like, and good on you, man. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, let's say, uh, well, what are we at time wise? We are at, uh, we got about 15 minutes left. Oh, then I would say, Bane, you already started talking about this already. Maybe we can kind of further develop. Um, we know there are mutators coming, right? They showed off some of them already. Um, beyond just adding mutators, um, you mentioned one already having a kind of profile view of, of players. What else? Would you want to, if you could, if you could have Shiny Shoe in a room with you, and they asked, "Hey, see you all all the time, in the top twenty-five. We really want to uh, develop this further. What would be your recommendations to push, um, push maybe a participation or push uh, the, uh, I don't know, fun to be had? I don't know. What yeah, would yeah, you, yeah. what I, would you recommend? I, I, I get what you're getting to, that. Uh, push the daily challenge further. All right. So, I mean. I'm of two minds, right? I, I would love to see Monster Train become an evergreen game that just is uh, constantly improved upon and and really built up. I think it has completely got that capacity and it doesn't need much to change it to really get to that point. Um, as far as daily challenge specifically goes, because um, what I would love to see is a, is a regular hybrid between Hell Rush and daily challenge, but that's way off topic. Um, the, uh, just, just narrowing that leaderboard, improving the UI, uh, so, the, sorry, the user experience for being able to see how am I doing against people who I care about? Like, I'd love to be able to go through and, you know, see the Thanatoses and stuff like that and, 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 and pin them. And so that way, these are people I care about. These are people I want to see how I'm doing against every day. Um, that'd be fantastic if I could. Uh, see leaderboards where I can see people who do trialists. Like, think about it. If we've got all these new people who want to jump in and they're just like, oh, I can never get to the top of the scoreboards. Maybe that's because they're playing without trials, but there's no reason that they should be compared necessarily to the overall leaderboard. Still have that overall leaderboard, of course, but allow there to be some leaderboard options where I can see, hey, what about people who just didn't pick any trials? How am I doing against those people? Because you know if i'm new to the game that's that's probably what i'm going to be doing and it'd be cool to um compare myself to those people instead of just you know the the, the sailings of the world um i would love to see uh that broken down i said with restarts you know i'm a purist i don't restart battles there are there's one exception to restarting battles that's if i make a uh, tactical error in placing units down on the very first turn because there is no undo function in the game, um, that is the only time that I will uh, restart a battle in this game. And it's fine that other players don't want to do that. Um, it's fine that other players want to restart battles and, and do things their way. I, I completely 100% applaud it. But at the same token, I would love to see an Iron Man leaderboard where it's 
those people who uh, don't uh, don't uh, don't do that to see you know how how it's done there too. Yeah, um, can, can I jump in real quick, real no. quick, Salink? I'm sorry, real quick. I I would love like 100 love to go Iron Man all the time. Like I don't think there should be that bullshit where you quit out. Like, I really don't like it. I think it's nonsense. And, like, I understand that it's in the game right now, but I think it should be negated. Like, I don't think it should be in the game. I think if you quit out of the game, you should, like, forfeit your run. So, um... Well, I'm in a, in a bit of a unique position here because I do actually have a relatively direct way to talk to the devs as a beta tester and I have made su suggest suggestions for uh, improvements for the daily challenges before. In fact, I know that at least one mutator is coming that I inspired or helped form. Um, I also did already, uh, we, we beta testers did already su uh, suggest a uh, 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 Hell Rush style daily challenge. Um, our idea was that there would be two daily challenges, one in Hell Rush mode and one in normal mode, that uh, both of them would be accessible. Um, so uh, I would definitely like some of the leaderboard changes that have been uh, talked about. Something like uh, the Iron Man, I would definitely be in for that because uh, I don't mind restarting and approaching a battle like a puzzle. How to do the optimal play, how to get the best possible kill, That's that can be fun in its own way and I would... I, I, I don't think it should be removed. But uh, for people who don't restart their entire uh, their, their combats over and over again or l people who don't restart combats at all uh, having an, their own uh, displayed leaderboard that would be very interesting I personally try to avoid it uh, because I play all my daily challenges on stream and I don't want to bore my viewers by showing them the same combat over and over again. But I do it from time to time just uh, to display also the different results a battle can have if you make slight tactical changes in the early setup phase or something like that. So uh, actually I think restarting battles is also very nice for learning the tactical part of the combat where you can make slight changes and see how the results turn out so uh, I don't think uh, that possibility should be removed um, yeah other than that uh, something I would be interested in is uh, as a more hardcore player I would be interested in uh, higher covenant dailies not the uh, not every day maybe maybe it could be a weekly running like uh, on covenant 10 or 20 or even 20 yeah, like on, on um, or something like that uh, alongside the normal daily something like that would be fun just as an added challenge where it might not actually be correct to take every trial uh, for example uh, I think there was a bug on the first or second day that made the daily challenge be Covenant 25. Uh, so that was very interesting for me as a player that was already experienced with Covenant 25 stuff to play with and um, so that's something I could see that would make the daily challenge more interesting for me and perhaps other players who are trying to push their limits. Yeah, but um, as it stands, I think the daily challenge is still really fun. And uh, the leaderboard improvements that Bane talked about would be a big step 
towards improving the whole thing. So, uh, I would say for me, a lot of it is I would love to see more stats. Just love to see more stats on like, um, as you mentioned, trial taking on uh, early turn kills. I'd love to see even card selection. What was the most picked card across the daily challenge across all players? Like that kind of stuff would be the data person. Uh, and I, in my normal life job, I work a lot with data. So that kind of stuff would just, yeah, that would... Uh, yeah, I can't tell you how much I agree with that. Like, everything you're saying right now rings true to... Like, the one thing I struggle with is, like, I always want to see that shit. Like, I always want to know what people are picking, which route they're going, and why. And so I agree with you, Nate. And, and then the other... This has been my... I don't know how they could make it work. But what we, would be cool for me is a little bit of... Um, ability and how people start their runs and for me that would be if you allowed people to pick their covenant level on the daily challenge and it affected their overall score but again from the very outset you had a risk reward knowing the mutators am i willing to bump it up and you probably only do it in five interval levels or ten interval levels or whatever being able to say i am willing to try this on covenant 20 i'm willing to try this on covenant 10 and having that affect your score i don't know again i don't know how feasible that is but for me, that'd be an interesting idea just to see um, how much people are willing to push risk and uh, try to achieve you know, higher scores. I um, mean, but as it is, that's oh, interesting, but is that not like a train wreck waiting to, waiting to happen? Like, isn't that gonna, just going to be like all the top players exactly where they belong? Maybe. Or maybe uh, it's the Icarus and you reach too close to the sun and you uh, get burned, right? Like, you yep. know. And, but I, th I'm coming from the perspective, and if you ever saw any of my earlier content or you do my weekly challenge, that's my mentality, right? Is to really like push it too far in some cases and and get wrecked. But, uh, but I would like me, um, this is maybe a controversial, I think I win not, not the score wise, but I think it's easy for me to complete the daily challenges consistently. Like yeah, if you're, you're very if consistent. You're 25. Playing couple level 25 and you're losing daily challenges, I don't know what's happening because they're not, at least from my perspective, the mutators don't push it enough to where I'm losing to Seraph. I may not get 8,000 points. 8,000 points. I rarely lose. And I would like a daily challenge occasionally. That's why I love the first daily challenge. I didn't know why my units were getting dazed on floor 10. or far the, I didn't realize why the units were getting dazed on floor 3. But I loved it because it really pushed me and I didn't succeed. And it's probably the only daily challenge that I haven't beaten Seraph. For sure not the one where I, well, actually that's not true. There's a couple others where I lost that I can remember, but I would like that experience more often to really be challenged. But I don't know that, that the large player base agrees. No, so that's I, what I, 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 think, I think that that could definitely work. What you would do is it would just be a visual indicator. And then as long as the leaderboards, as long as there were more leaderboards, have a Covenant 10, have a Covenant 25 leaderboard done. Like, yep. it's pretty straightforward. So they keep the same score. There's no score change, but you do get your own unique leaderboard that you can have a look at if you want to compare your situation against other players willing to do that. Yeah, I could see that. Um, definitely something that has been talked about before in the closed beta community as well. Uh, and uh, I'm definitely all in for it. It could make things a lot more interesting. I would prefer separate leaderboards for the separate Covenant levels. Maybe make it Covenant 10, Covenant 20, Covenant 25 as the uh, the stages basically. And then just have different leaderboards for each of them instead of adding a score modifier and mixing them all together because that's gonna be pretty hard to nail the exact uh, score modifier basically yeah I, th I think that wouldn't work out quite as well for that but with separate leaderboards there's much it would be much easier to make to make that uh, make that work yeah probably, and probably oh go ahead sorry Ben no, I was all I was gonna say is that I fully agree with like personal records and and like I love in single player when I get to see those like I beat my like max score in this. 
I'd love to see what all the players get. You know, how many people chose the left path here? Like even that level, if we could get it, not that I'm imagining we could, like all of that data stuff would be 100%. Like I am super on board with that. Yep, me too. Um, slight, uh, slight change of topic here. I would also like to see the ability to view other people's decks in Hellrush, which we currently do not have. Yeah, uh... I, I mean, it, it, it is changed the topic, but it's, it all relates back to the same thing, right? Guys, like, we do want to know, like, which way did you go? Did you go left or right? Did you pick the artifact? Which artifact did you pick? Like, we all want to know that. For me, it would, I, I, even just having it on the end screen, having a viewable, like you have, right? You have the rings because you have each of the different trials that were taken and the scores, and just like having the. Uh, There's kind of stuff that you could do, but uh, yeah. um, right. we are at one hour, so I'm going to try to keep us on time. Uh, super appreciate their participation. I think this was a really good discussion. Um, and I think uh, future topics, definitely Hell Rush is one of them that I want to cover. Um, and in addition, just Covenant level 25 play, how we feel like the, the state of current high level play is going. Uh, but yeah, with that, let's uh, let's close um, and good luck on the future daily challenges. Again, appreciate your participation, and we will talk again hopefully soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you very much. Shane and Sal, thank, thank yep. you for chatting with me. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Yeah. Uh, thank you, guys, for uh, the discussion. It was very interesting, uh, and especially thank you, Nate, for organizing the whole thing. No problem. Absolutely. Guys. Thank you very much, Nate. Right, then uh, see you guys later. And I will now jump into my normal, regularly scheduled stream activities. Yep. See you guys. And I'm going to head to bed again. <laughs> Sleep well. Way too early here. <laughs> yep. Goodbye.